This is Dawa Nigeria. Dawa Nigeria. Reviving the human bite by bite. Dawa Nigeria. Of our newspapers that without mention is words that Islamic banking is a plot to Islamize Nigeria, and that is when we started having this trouble. That was on 25th of July 2011, published on 25th of July 2011, saying clearly without mincing words that is that these do all non-interest banking or Islamic banking is a plot to do what? To Islamize Nigeria. And I think we have, let us also think objectively. Any non-Muslim that hears such a statement, I expect him to be furious. I expect him to be angry. I, I expect him to object and oppose anything Islamic. If that is true, that it is a plot to do what? To force another religion on him or her. He will have that moral justification to rise against it. That is exactly why we are, why we are where we are today. And even more shocking, because I read that interview completely, that interview by Cam National President. I read it completely. Even more shocking. It's, it's quite shocking to, de to declare that a business enterprise is a plot to Islamize Nigeria. If such a, uh, if, if such a statement should be made uh, in respect of another religion, we Muslims who are involved, we will actually reject it. That somebody who is planning to impose his or her religion on us. So I don't blame any Christian or any non-Muslim who has had this statement to start opposing non-interest or Islamic banking. If my leader has told me that it's a plot to Islamize Nigeria. So that is exactly where I'm going. That is how we got to where we are today. And that is why Islamic banking, non-interest banking has been treated one way in 1991 one way in 1999, one way in 2003, even one way in 2010, but being treated differently in 2011. We've, this is the source. This is the cause of all the problems. And we must address it if we want to find a solution for it. And in that interview, even more shocking, is the misleading statement by the man of God that Arabic symbols removed by ex-governor of CBN have been restored by Y governor of CBN. Somebody or somebody of that caliber leading a respected institution to be making such an unfounded claim that CBN under Professor Chukuma Soludo removed Arabic symbols or Islamic symbols and Samusi Namedo has actually restored them. When I read this, I quickly brought out all the currency notes in my pocket. The one um, I know, you all know, it was only from the uh, lower denominations, starting from 50 Naira, 20 Naira, and 10 Naira and 5 Naira. That is uh, the currency note on which Arabic or Islamic symbols were removed. I started looking for the currency note I have in my pocket, looking for the restoration claimed by the man of God. But unfortunately, I could not find any restoration. You can also check your pocket now. I'm sure you will have currency notes in your pocket. Check it to see whether this is true or not. How can we just inciting ourselves against one another for something that is completely untrue? Unfounded. My brothers and sisters in Islam, before coming to this lecture, and precisely on Thursday, that is two days ago, I also said maybe uh, CBN has produced new currency notes with Arabic symbols that have not gotten to me here in Illinois. Then, do you know what I did? I made contact with officials of Central Bank of Nigeria. Authoritatively, I'm saying this. On Thursday and on Friday yesterday, 
I made contact with officials of Central Bank of Nigeria, asking them that please tell me, I have one, info, one piece of information, that what an ex-governor of Central Bank removed a white governor Central Bank has restored. We don't want to ask questions now about why the ex-governor should remove what has been in place for decades. Why? We are not even asking that questions. But I just hope they will not force us to start asking those questions. Because when we start, it will not be in the best interest of this country. We are not even asking that question. That why? Why? Why must we remove what has been in place for decades? <laughs> but forget about that now. I called, I made contact with CBN officials that please let me know the latest printed currency in Nigeria, you must know it, you are officials of CBN. I'm preparing for a public lecture. I want you to verify this information for me. And they said, we will get back to you. Until yesterday, they got back to me and said categorically that that is completely untrue. That is completely untrue. But Nigerians have read that on pages of newspapers. Again, we just have to just read the justification for some kind of opposition that we are witnessing recently from non-Muslims of this country. Because when they are reading something like this, it will actually incite them against whoever is talking Islamic or promoting Islamic banking. But unfortunately, for something that is not even true. So that is even more shocking in the interview of uh, Khan National President. It's unfortunate. Having this in mind, having this in mind, could one then lend credence to a suggestion by some that Khan, as a respected and informed institution, is a very respected institution, does not be adequately informed. I don't doubt that. A suggestion is coming from some quarters now that could we then assume that Khan, as a respected and informed institution, must have known what I'm telling you today. They must have known it before you, before you, before me. What is that? They must have known the existence of non interest banking before now in the laws of Nigeria. <laughs> that central bank has been licensing. They must have known this. If I, as an ordinary citizen of this country, should know, I believe such an esteemed and respected institution must have known. So this is a suggestion coming from particular quarters of citizens of this country that then do we uh, lay credence to that suggestion that they must have actually known that this has actually been practiced. It's, it's, it's already available. But it was, Khan was satisfied with the bastardized way NIB was being operated up to now in Nigeria that made it unattractive to anybody, Muslims and non-Muslims alike. How many of you have account with NIB in Nigeria? Even you, you are all Muslims, I believe. How many of you, maybe not even 1% of you has? It's not attractive to anybody because of the bastardized way of operating it. That has been in place since. We are just enduring it. That okay, let's take it that way. It is not as been practiced in UK, London. Never, ne neither is it as been practiced in Germany, in Europe, in America, in Asia. It is been practiced in a way that has been bastardized in this country. Then could we just support this suggestion that the problem is actually this? that these people, no, they actually know that it has been in place. But they were satisfied with that bastardized implementation that will forever make non-interest banking unattractive to anybody, Muslims and non-Muslims alike. But what has changed? What has really changed? What has really changed? That's a question for all of you. What has really changed is that in the control of CBN today, at the hands of affairs of Central Bank of Nigeria today, 
we have somebody we have somebody who actually knows the workability of a true non-interest banking yeah in addition to knowing and even mastering the intricacies of conventional banking that is exactly what has changed we now have in that position somebody who will never tolerate a bastardized implementation of non-interest banking who will ask you to comply with international best practices Islamic banking cannot be a Nigerian version of model. It's an international phenomenon. It is because we have such a person in place today in that position who knows how a true NID should work. How a true non-interest banking should work. In addition to knowing everything, the intricacies of the conventional banking, you cannot tell him he's a foolish, he doesn't know banking. For your information, the CBM governor we have today, Alhamdulillah, graduated, graduated with a first class degree in economics. He led as chief executive officer of the biggest bank in the country, First Bank, before he was invited to come and join CBM as the governor. So he knows everything. So this particular suggestion is saying, could this be where our problem lies? That these people already, they know that NIB has been in operation since the 1990s. But the way it is being practiced, that's, that's enough so that it not be attractive to anybody. Even Muslims. How many of you, as I ask you, uh, are operating, uh, 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 actually have a country with NIB? You will not. Because it is not being practiced the way it should be. It's not being practiced the way it is being practiced in Britain, in other parts of the world. So, it's actually, uh, I think, one may. Uh, the first to learn credence with such a suggestion. You may call it uh, mere aspersions. No, no problem. You may call it mere aspersions. But I tell you, these aspersions may be too difficult to fault. Given the most recent comment by the camp president, the most recent comment is that no, we are not actually against Islamic banking. That is the most recent comment coming from that quarter. That, okay, you have raised against my comment. You have proved that I'm wrong in some ways. We are not actually saying we don't want Islamic banking. This is the most recent. It was published in PM News uh, paper. The most recent comment coming from this institution is that we are not actually what? We are not actually against Islamic banking. But what we are actually saying is that we don't see a reason why non-interest banking under CBN should have a special guideline. We don't see a reason why you should have a special guideline for non-interest banking. Or why you should have a board of experts. So just continue to do it the way you have been doing. <laughs> that is the most recent comment. That we are not actually against Islamic banking. But what we are actually saying is that why do you need a special guideline? Why do you need a committee of Sharia experts? Even CBN has removed the word Sharia now. <laughs> that if that is a problem, let's remove Sharia from it. Call them committee of experts. That is the main publication by CBN. Just to, make, to, 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 to maintain the peace, the peaceful coexistence of different uh, uh, religions, uh, followers of different religions in this country. CBN has done that. They removed the word Sharia. And no Muslim is talking. Because that is our right. But we are not, we are even overlooking that. Because as I said, even when you go to Britain, ask them. I will give you the website of Islamic Bank of Britain. Islamic Bank of what? Britain. IBB. is in London. In England, go to IBB London, Islamic Bank of Britain. They will tell you these are members of our Sharia board. There's no way in the world where you will operate such an uh, such a model of banking and depend solely on the regulators who do not know anything about the workability, about the rules and regulations of this model of banking. It's not possible. 
what is being done worldwide, all over the world, is to have a committee, a Sharia committee. But here in Nigeria, we say we don't want Sharia committee. CBN has succumbed to that pressure and even removed the word Sharia. Call it whatever you like. But as I told you, here is a man who is in the know of what happens in other parts of the world. You cannot deceive him. He knows exactly how you must come about, how you must practice non-interest banking if you want to do it, unless you be deceiving people. So, um, the recent comment is that we do not want a special guideline, neither do we support a board of experts to oversee its operation. Um, well, I will say it here. I don't know, and I, start, I, I stand to be corrected if I'm wrong. If anybody has something contrary to this, should come forward to say it. I don't know of any country of the world where they will say we are operating NIB, but no special guidelines. <laughs> where they will say we have non-interest banking, but no committee of experts. Let those who are regulating conventional, who do not know anything about the rules and regulations, let them be the one to oversee. There is nowhere in the world where they are doing that. Except where. Do you know the only exception? Nigeria. Since 1999, that non-interest banking has been practiced in this country, in the banks I've mentioned to you, they have been doing it with no special guideline and no a single member of any Sharia committee. That is the Nigerian experience. <laughs> and we call it the Nigerian Islamic banking. <laughs> that is, no need for any guideline. Just do it the way you, you feel. And no need for any committee to oversee it that has been done in other parts of the world. I am afraid we are running out of time. Um, my brothers and sisters in Islam, even as worrisome, as disturbing, as the above statement are uh, to me and uh, to many Nigerians, I mean the statement that is a plot to Islamize Nigeria, Nigeria, the statement that we do not want, we don't, we don't, they are quite disturbing and worrisome. But as they are worrisome to many Nigerians, I must confess to you today that I actually heaved a sigh of relief when it eventually became clear to us that opposition to Islamic or non-interest banking, although may be the position of Khan executives, but is surely not the position of all Nigerian Christians, alhamdulillah. That one has become clear today. And that is the sigh of relief I heaved. Because it was quite disturbing to hear all those statements. But I was happy when it became clear that that may be the position of the executives for whatever reasons. But that is surely not the position of our brothers and sisters, the co-citizens, Christians of this country. Alhamdulillah. And I will prove that to you now. In an interview with a Nigerian Tribune correspondent, just two days ago, on 25, today is 27th August, on 25th of August 2011, just two days ago, in an interview with Nigerian Tribune correspondent, Apostle Perez Iola Onyeni, the presiding pastor of Achievers Rock Commission International in Ibadan, dissociated himself completely from those opposing Islamic or non-interest banking. He even quoted from the book of Matthew 5, verse 42, to portray his viewpoint. Go and read Nigerian Tribune of 25th of August 2011, just two days ago. Just two days ago. So we must be happy that we have such people in our midst. Not only that. Similarly, Pastor Tunde Bakari of Later Rain Assembly Lagos equally found fault with Khan's position on non-interest banking. 
He described those criticizing the Central Bank of Nigeria on the introduction of non-interest banking as being greedy, adding that ordinary Nigerians will benefit a lot from it, whether you are a Muslim or not. That is the truth. I will quote what he said. He said, Pastor Teddy Bakari said, the current 34% interest rate being charged by banks is too excessive and I will quickly open an account once it, non-interest banking, once it is introduced because it will be beneficial to me. Once again, I will quickly open an account once it is introduced because it will be beneficial to me. I read one more statement to you from the same man. He said, nobody can Islamize or Christianize any nation, including Nigeria. The problem of Nigeria is not about religion, but greed and corruption. End of quote. <laughs> Allah Akbar, we must be happy, really. And be hopeful that this country will be better off, inshallah. As long as we have people thinking positively like this in our midst. At this junction, a reference must also be made here to another patriotic Nigerian in the person of Dr. Mrs. Okonjo Nweala, the finance minister, who, although a Christian, approved the Nigeria's membership of Islamic Development Bank as the finance minister under General Basandio's administration. What the administrations of generals were Bukhari, General the Bangida General Atacha Wahom, what they could not do, this woman single handedly championed the cause during the administration of General Richard Mabasado. It was by then that Nigeria was able to join what? Islamic Development Bank. I must tell you, IDB is the only, Islamic Development Bank is the only institution in the world that will give you millions of billions and will not take a single, a 1% a, a, a interest on it. So that is what the woman said by then. Like, what are you talking? <laughs> you can see how much we are indebted to other so-called uh, Paris club or whatever <laughs> in the world. And here is another institution telling us to come and get money and not pay interest. Then you are saying no. We say, yeah, because it is they say, let it be Islamic or even more. Yeah. Because when they said, you cannot become IDB member until you join OIC, she said you will join. <laughs> the judgment was purely based on what? On pure economic considerations. That is what we need in this country. An unprejudiced assessment of issues, regardless of our affiliations. Dr. Kunge Wella is not a Muslim. I'm, I'm happy she's back now. We have to thank President Bullock Jonathan for reintroducing that kind of a person into the cabinet. I learned she's also the finance minister today. We need more and more people that will be thinking positively like that for this country to grow, to develop, as others are doing in other parts of the world. Um, so, you see, uh, we must actually give kudos to her. In the light of mentioning Pastor Iola, Pastor Bakari, we must also thank this woman for doing what is necessary for her, what is beneficial for us as a country, and setting aside whatever sentiment. And you know, I told you, this happened during uh, uh, this administration, General Lucien Gorbassendor's administration. General Gorbassendor could hardly hold the dissenting view. He could not oppose that woman. Why? Because it was this. It was the same general that We must also thank him for that, for letting us know the truth, so that we can have an unprejudiced and objective assessment of issues. 
He said a few years before, criticizing and lamenting the injustice of the interest rate imposed on Nigeria as a nation because we borrow money. Look, hear what the uh, General Ambassador just said. All that we had borrowed up to 1985 was around $5 billion. Around what? $5 billion up to 1985 when we started paying back. And we have paid about $16 billion. Who is making that statement? The man who should know. The first citizen of Nigeria by then. He should know every account belonging to this country. He said we are paid about 16 billion. Yet we got how much? Just 5 billion. But if that is the end of the story, we will not be lamenting. He, he might have not lamented. He might have not uh, 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 cried out or, uh, uh, or criticized the system. But look at what he had it. Yet we are still being told that we owe about 28 billion dollars. <laughs> We got five, paid system, and they are telling us we still have outstanding 28. We have good mathematicians here. How much do we have now? 44 billion dollars. As against how much? Only 5 billion dollars. He had it. Not, he has not finished. Then, uh, you know, Ambassador just said, if you ask me, what the worst thing in the world is, I will say it is interest rates. <laughs> End of quote. From whom? From General Lucia Ambassador. We must also thank him for saying this. We need facts and figures like this to help our people to have positive thinking and unprejudiced assessment of issues. Uh, Mr. Chairman is asking me to round up, and I will do that. I don't have any other option. Uh, but unfortunately, I have planned initially, all I've been saying is just to give you the background knowledge of how we got to where we are. Then we, 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 we should have gone, if we had time, to the parameters the benchmarks that I will want every Nigerian to use whenever you are to talk about Islamic banking. It is either you use economic parameter or legal parameter or moral parameter. You either talk of non-interest banking either legally or economically or, or morally. If you want to have objective and objective and prejudice assessment of this issue. Anything different from this is just parochial, is sectarian, is serving some interest, not the interest of this country. But we do not have time. But I will plead to Chairman just to give you one perspective alone out of this three. And that is the most relevant of these parameters. And that is what economic assessment of NIB. It is no more news today, it's no more a big story that conventional banking or conventional economy generally in the world is not doing well. Is that still a news? Is that good news to you? Is that new to you now? It's no more. The indicators are bound everywhere that the conventional economy or conventional banking has a major component of conventional economy is not actually doing well, not only in Nigeria but in other parts of the world. I will give you facts and figures to be able to uh, 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 assimilate that. The 2000 economic downturn or financial crisis that led to the collapse of big names in conventional banking and finance, such as Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Lima Goras, Indy Mac, Washington Mutual. These are big players. <laughs> they used to be big players in conventional banking. Indy Mac, uh, um, uh, Washington Mutual alone has 307 billion in assets. Dollars, not naira. You know that amount of money. 
So these, they, they used to be big players in the conventional system. We are a day to day. They are no more. They failed. They have closed down. Not only that, in 2009 alone, facts and figures that you can verify, go to the internet, you can see them. In 2009 alone, a total of 140 conventional banks were closed down in U.S. alone. A total of 140 just in one year after the crisis. You said, ah, 140? Even in 2010, the year after that, the number was more than that. A total of 157 banks, conventional banks, were equally liquidated in U.S. alone in 2010. We are still in 2011. We don't know what the figure will be by the end of But they will say it. Oyibo will never deceive themselves as we are doing to ourselves in this country. They will tell you the true position of things. They will publish it on their, on their website, on the internet, for you to see. 140 in 2009, and how many in 2010? 157 failed banks in U.S. alone. We are not talking of other uh, parts of in Europe, in Asia, just in just one country. That's so just one indicator to tell us conventional system is not working properly. It's not, it's not doing well. And just in this month of August, we are in August 2011, this is another indicator. Do you know the biggest economies of the world? You must know. The biggest economy of the world is the economy of U.S. U.S. is number one economy of the world, followed by the European uh, nations or European Union economy, in, in uh, Arizona economy. Then the third biggest economy of the world is what? Japan. That is the order. The first U.S., followed by Europe, then Japan. Chinese may likely overtake not only Japan, but even Europe very soon if not even the U.S. <laughs> but what we are saying today, just in the beginning of this month, the first and the third biggest economies in the world actually lost their gold plated credit rating. You know what we call credit rating? I can point to you an accountant here who will explain to you further. <laughs> Abuja is there, is a specialist is a lecturer in university. He will educate you on what they call what? Credit rating in the world. Each and every country of the world is rated according to the credit worthiness of such a country. They have different ways of doing that, but the major ones, the most known, the, 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 the most popular in the world today, uh, chairman is mentioning one now, so chairman is in the know of is 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 the likes of the chairman that should be talking about banking, not somebody that does not know anything or next to nothing, will be inciting the section of the citizens against another. So thank you very much, sir. He mentioned uh, what Fitch. That is a credit rating agency. It's a major credit rating agency. Fitch. Fitch rating. Go to the internet to see it. Another one is S and P, Standard and Poor's. That is in America. Is a major credit rating agency. And the third one is Moody's. We have S&P, Standard and Post rating, Moody's rating, and Fitch rating. These are major agencies for credit rating in the world. Do you know that only in this August, the highest rate of credit worthiness of any country or any institution is AAA. And that is why you will see in some of our banks in Nigeria in the adverts, they will say the AAA banking. Maybe they have lost that rating, but they will not tell you. Because rating is not something that is stagnant, that is stable. They will rate you now, rate you tomorrow, rate you next month, rate you next year. Not telling us what you have acquired a year or two ago and still using in the advert. That is only possible here. It can never be possible in any other country where they would monitor anything that comes on air. Not like we are in Nigeria, where anybody can just come to say whatever he likes. Especially when it has to do with religion. Everybody is a scholar. Everyone is a, is a scholar. But let's come back to what we are discussing. AAA is the highest uh, rate. America used to be on that level. 
But I tell you, in the beginning of August 2011, unfortunately, America lost that position. America is now rated below that low degree position of AAA ranking in the credit uh, rating uh, analysis. Not only that, Japan, just three days ago, I, I saw it on CNN, I was also surprised to see a country, a big uh, 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 economy such as the Japanese economy, dropping on the credit rating just as it happened to U.S. in less than a month ago. France, France today, another major economy of the world, is actually battling to maintain its rating on credit worthiness. So this is another indicator to tell you that conventional way of banking or economy is not, don't let them deceive you, is not performing well in the world. Uh, okay, let me come to the local experience to tell you that conventional is not going well. Where is Afri Bank today? Where is Spring Bank today? Where is Bank PAB today? They are gone. They are no more. The Central Bank of Nigeria has liquidated, liquidated these three banks and renamed them, giving them another name. That is to tell you the system is not as they will portray it to us that it is performing well. It is not. But we like to deceive ourselves in Nigeria. That is the problem. Even when we are talking of 140 in U.S. in just one year, Alhamdulillah, in Nigeria we, can, we are just talking of how many? Just three. But CBN has given a warning to some other banks and given them till when? Till September 30th. About a month now, you may also see many more banks being liquidated. The CBN governor has told them point blank, is it that we recapitalize by September 30 or we take you over as we, do, we did to PHB, uh, Spring Bank and Afri Bank? It's, you cannot play with people's money. People are working assiduously, painstakingly to get this money. Then you cannot just sit there and play with it. So this is the local world experience. And there's one thing notable here. I wonder why our media is not, uh, our people in the media are not telling us that. For the first time in the recent history of this country, a bank will close down and nobody will lose a cover. And even nobody will lose a job. He even told them, the CBN governor, Sanusi Lamido, told them that even if you are still interested in keeping your job with those failed banks, we will keep you. And whoever, if you, have, uh, you can try it on Monday, go to any of these banks, you will still meet your account number as it has been. In the recent history of this country, that has never happened. You know what happened to people when banks closed down. Or oh, don't you know that? But unfortunately, we are not hearing good news. We are not hearing... Uh, people commending Samusi Lamido for what he has achieved for us as a nation. But all we are hearing is this man has come to Sharia Bank. It's an achievement. It's a feat that has never been achieved in the recent history of this country. For somebody to have done that, we need to give him the credit. Deserved. But that is not us for happening. And that is part of what we say. We are just enjoying it. We are just managing ourselves in this country. So please tell me whoever is inciting a section of this country to please stop it. If we start asking those questions, it will not be in the interest of this country. And finally, finally, uh, we have said it clearly for you to know. That is what economic assessment of what then I be. Do you need it or not? This is what you are talking about. This is the conventional system. This is the conventional system. We cannot claim that all is well in the world today, economically, unless we are deceiving ourselves. Do you know why? It is being proved that 20% of the world population today, just how much, how many, 20% of the world population 
are actually controlling three quarters of the world wealth. Just 20% controlling three quarters of what belongs to the whole world. We cannot claim that things are well if that is the situation. In a world that we, uh, 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 that we have an estimate of about $40 billion, how, many, how much? $40 billion being spent in Europe and North America on cosmetics and pets. $40 billion annually. In the same world, you have not less than 1 billion hungry men and women. This is according to a survey carried out in July 2009 by Al Jazeera Al Jazeera Media Outreach. So we cannot deceive ourselves to say this is the system we, are, we have been practicing is the best. Don't let another system come on board. It's not true. But if I am saying it's not true, if my chairman is saying that, maybe people will be skeptical about our statement that they actually want to promote their own model of banking. That is why I will leave everything to one of the most knowledgeable people on the face of the earth today on banking. It is evil. They even refer to him as the England Banking Supremo. The England Banking Supremo. That is the one who knows best about banking in Iloba, <laughs> in UK. Who is that one? Is the governor of the Bank of England. Bank of England is an equivalent of Central Bank we have here. The governor of Central Bank, or as they call it, the governor of Bank of England, Marvin King, is the one that will tell you what you will not be listening to if I were to tell you, or my chairman should tell you. Listen, you will listen to Marvin King. You cannot claim his ignorance of what he's saying. Marvin King is the current governor of the Bank of England. Here is what he said. Just on October 25, 2010, also less than a year, Marvin King said, he said it in New York, at the Economist Bottom World Gathering in New York, that of all the ways of all the many ways of organizing banking, the worst is the one we have today. Of all the many ways of organizing banking, the worst is what we have today. Who is saying that? An Imam, an Alpha, Marvin King, the governor of the Bank of England. You cannot claim to know what he does not know in, in, in terms of economics. I will give you a short pro a, a brief profile of the man so that you will know who is talking. Marvin King is governor of the Bank of England and the chairman of the Monetary Policy Committee and Financial Policy Committee all in England. He was previously the chief economist and executive director. Marvin King was trained at some of the best universities in the world. He attended Cambridge University in UK and Harvard University in the United States of America. That is where he was trained as an economist. Also, he lectured in both universities. He was a lecturer at both Cambridge and Harvard University. And he was equally a professor of economics at the London School of Economics before becoming Governor of uh, Bank of England. Well, we will conclude now, alhamdulillah, and uh, I want to sincerely thank uh, Mr. Chairman, equally thank the organizers of today's program, uh, but I'm afraid we don't have any uh, 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 further uh, space of time to give a summary in Yoruba, as I promised earlier, I beg you for that. Maybe on some other occasions we shall have we shall be uh, taking care of that insha'Allah. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ilu muslimin fa astaghfirullah innahu wa al-ghafur rahim. Thank you.